What's up guys? We got a new inverter in today. I'm gonna show you what I plan on doing. So right now I got all the DC that's supposed to go straight from the RV to the battery hooked up to the DC load on here. Cause I wanna measure everything going out and everything coming in. The only thing that isn't, I have a 1500 watt modified sine wave that goes to this plug. That's the switch for there. This one's directly on the battery. And then same with the one over there behind Kiki. And this is the one I just got today. So show you what the plan is with it. Cause I want all of the outlets in the trailer are going to be hooked up to this one here. Cause it should power, it's 300 and my average load won't really be more than 200 and this can spike up to 750 and this one's pure sine wave but I need to get a light in here okay. so right now it's still plugged in to shore but all of these I got these two mains running directly to the output, the load on the charge controller. And I still have one spare circuit I haven't used. So I'm gonna tie the DC end of this onto that circuit so it'll run off the charge controller. And I've tested all of the light sockets in the trailer and they all come down to these two right here, this one and this one, the receptacles and then the counter Gia. And I can't remember, I'll have to double check again. It might be the galley too. I think it, yeah, I'll double check them. But anyway, there's two of them that run almost all. And I'm gonna get in behind here and try and see if I can get them unplugged obviously with full disconnect and then wire them onto a household plug into this and we should have all the light sockets in here or not the sockets all of the stock ones working what's up babe <laughs> okay well i'm gonna get started on this install and we're gonna light the fireplace because we just had thermostat set to the lowest just for antifreeze right now and yeah it's 10 degrees in here we just got back from being away for two days so i'll get a <laughs> so i'll get a video of this fireplace and put that on a separate one just so you guys can get an idea of how much wood it fits because i've seen those other ones that people buy pre-made and they're tiny and they only burn for about two hours this thing will burn for four to six hours if you uh plug up some of these dampers I've just been doing it with tin foil but I'm gonna put a more permanent solution on there probably a slider like a normal damper all right I'm gonna cut out and get a different video of this and then I will come back to this video and show you guys what we ended up doing with that okay so it ended up being these two here and they actually already bust two of these together onto this one. And then this is the other one here. And then we got all the live wires on this side. So where did I put it? I'm gonna run this thing here up through either that hole, probably that hole, cause yeah. There's no space on these other ones. They're all sealed. So we'll run it through there. And then run the DC connections up through here. We'll hook, not onto that, um, hook onto the negative. And we'll get our positive over here. So we can have it fused. And then back here is where it'll sit with all of the timers and the other inverter and stuff 
that one right there with the plug coming out of it that plug leads to the socket up here and then we got another light down there for if we got to work down here directly off the battery while the load is turned off on the charge controller because the load charges or shuts down all the dc in the whole trailer so we can shut down all the ac and dc in the whole trailer and still have that directly off the battery to run tools and have light so that's handy but and get all this wired up and then do a test and show you guys the final product and then this whole trailer is officially unplugged and no water service no power service anything so we're chucking all of our gray or black water out and chucking all of our fresh water in and we'll be off the grid so should be ready to go by the end of the month we're getting a new bigger panel too so going into there. Oh, there. Oh, into there. Oh, okay. The whole thing, like, so I don't, when I don't need a pouch, I just really, like, I just, well, and then the super warm is passed through, but yeah. Heat shrink, and we got the two, um, connections that I wanted to just jump on. Oh, I'll just do a video. But yeah, I got two of these connections bridged over to this. And it goes from there. And those two do all the sockets in the whole fifth wheel. And um, we're also gonna have this closet plumbed into it too. So that's gonna be directly off the inverter on its own but anyway yeah that those ones for the ac inside the fifth wheel go into come out of the box right here onto that and then there's one more port left next to it right here and that's the one that i'm gonna put the timer directly on that runs this bar here, and that bar has all the electrical going up to all these different things. And some are hardwired. I mean, technically they're plugs, but they've all been rewired so that they could be uh, ran through the wall. And I just figured I might as well use an easy junction, like wall style. Can be easily moved to other spots in the trailer. But, um, yeah, should fire it up. It's all gonna be around. Oh, yeah, and then going back from the inverter, we got the cable from the inverter stripped on the ends, and that goes right back through where the AC got ran. And then that just comes up right here. And this panel is rated for 20 amps. You can't really see it. But those are all the same gauge as the gauge that I'm, or the rest of them are all the same gauge as the one that the inverter is. And they're all being ran at 15, but rated for up to 20. And because this is literally about 12 inches, um with dc loads and amps and stuff uh you can get away with a little more if you're going a way shorter distance and most of these and this panel has been rated to be plumbed at least 15 or 20 some of them even 30 feet but yeah so we're running a 25 and we'll fire it up So now, 
And then we got that, which is plugged into right there. And what else do we got? Just so you can see, we're not running on shore power. Um, all these are switched to off. And that is including the main. The main is off. All of them are off. So, I'm just going to manually turn on the grow lights. Let's see, that's all going off the battery. Got it. I think that's 14 or 18 watts, 18. But yeah, you can see pulling 143 watts. And if I turn this off, it goes down to 120. So yeah, this one's about 22 watts, 23. But that's what I wanted to run it with this setup here. Because I can get up to 40 amps coming out of that charge controller and up to 40 amps coming in with solar. And I wanted it to monitor everything going in and out. So all the inverters and the grow lights, which I should turn off because that's going to mess up the light cycle. But everything is now running directly off solar the only thing is i did decide to leave the galley and the ac and the microwave outlet for sure um, the microwave is currently hardwired to uh the inverter directly to the battery with the switch by the stairs but what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I wanted to have the wall outlet because it's just a wall outlet that they got a s one designated wall outlet for the microwave. So I'm leaving that for shore power. So when I am plugged into shore, I can still run the air conditioner offshore because I won't be running the air conditioner off solar, at least not the built-in one. And then uh, I will have, yeah. I'll have that plug in for using tools or whatever. I feel like plugging in while I'm on shore. But yeah, that's it for this video, guys.